Hello ladies and gentlemen, Grungy here. Today I have something quite interesting to show you. So in front of you is a super precise stopwatch inside of Minecraft. So this stopwatch can actually measure 1 20th of a second. So the way this is possible is that Minecraft actually runs at 20 ticks per second. So all that means is that the game completes its calculations once every 20th of a second. And so using some neat tricks I'm about to show you, we can actually detect if um, that exact game tick that we play or pause this stopwatch in. Now I've gone ahead and I've made this stopwatch pretty compact. Uh, that was one of my challenges to I challenged myself to do. Um, I came up with this because I wanted to time how fast it took horses to run a certain distance so that I could find the speed of those horses and I'll show you that in a minute too how you can uh, use this to figure out the speed of a horse. And I want to do that with a high level precision. So on YouTube there is one other stopwatch that offers this level of precision and that's by a creator named Il Mango and I'll link his video in the description. And so his also did 1 20th of a second but it was a lot more bulkier and it was a little bit old and outdated so I've come up with a new design that's pretty neat. So these last two digits here you see are zero and um, when we actually stop this so they'll fill in so you can see that's an 8 so we got 90.8 seconds and you can even play it and or zoom again and then when you pause it these numbers will update so this time is 95.55 seconds and you can reset it while it's going or it, when it's completely stopped it doesn't matter it take the time to make sure that would work perfect so the way we detect if it's an odd or even game tick, I'll actually play it right here, is we use two of these comparator clocks. So these comparator clocks are actually offset by one game tick. So the way we get one game tick of delay is we have a repeater which is two ticks of delay and then this piston pushing a redstone block is actually three game ticks of delay. So if I um, freeze the game using um, Nimbom's carpet mod you can um, do this yourself if you want we can see they're offset but if I advance the game by one tick so I'm going to take step one you can see then now they're both on Oops. now one's on the other's off and now they're both off so if they're both the same it's an even game tick and if one's different it's an odd game tick so using an XOR gate which is just a logic gate which means it has to be one or the other not both or not neither of them so, um, that then it will output either a zero or a five. So this last digit is one twentieth of a second, zero or point zero five or zero seconds. So that's this is always going to be a zero or a five. And then how we detect the tenths of a second is with repeater locks. So if I, oops, if I unpause the game, you can see there's one signal that's going around here super fast. And when we pause this, I'm going to actually freeze the game real quick again. So I'm going to pause this. You can actually see it all lock. So, ready? Oh, and it locks it. And then it looks like this piston was being powered. So is this repeater down here has got locked. And so every time it gets to the end, it carries over to the next one. And I've actually compacted the traditional um, comparator signal decoder pretty far down so it's only uh, three blocks wide now and so I just sent the signal around the end and you can kind of you can see on both sides it kind of pinches the value at once and this seven segment display is actually a modified version of koala steamed and he, his I'll link his YouTube video in the description his was uses like an instant bud so it places piston one block closer to the redstone block but when you update it it pushes instantly and then it would update all the pistons next to it so I can demonstrate that here so if I go like oops if I place some blocks here if I update one of it it pushes them all and so that wasn't very uh, lag efficient because it was shifting all these blocks each time it needed to change a digit so I've just modified that slightly so that is a little bit more lag conscious and so that's how this works and I've compacted it so far that it actually fits within one chunk although you can actually expand this as far as you want and it will just keep catering this way you can just add another 
one of these four wide slices here and it'll you can tile it infinitely and you can even stop it say you wanted this to go to six and then you wanted it to go to you know your next digit so you can modify the just change the number of items in this dropper and in these two barrels and that can do it so you would change it so this would output a signal strength of of seven so right now they output a signal strength of 10 with this many items so we see with a comparator uh, just get one of those if I put a redstone dust, you can see outputs a signal strength of 10. So all you would need to do is throw out some items so you get a signal strength of 7. And then you just have to do the same thing with these uh, barrels here. And so then you can have it to jump to the next one at 10. And then you could knock off some of the uh, slices here. You can knock off, what, four of them. So now uh, I'll show you some quick demonstrations to prove to you that this actually is... Um, accurate to one game tick or one twentieth of a second. So a wooden button, oops, or, or a stone button, um, has uh, it stays on for one second, exactly one second. So if we push this, it'll give an update to this observer when it's turned on, and then when it unpresses itself, it'll also give another update. So they'll, they'll be exactly one second apart. So we can see that here, one second. Now with a wooden button. We can get, oops, reset that one more time. Reset, I said. Okay, there we go. With a wooden button, we should get 1.5 seconds exactly. There you go. And now I've set up another uh, demonstration. Okay. So that note block is just going to give uh, the observer an update. And if you don't like these outputs out the front, you can easily change those simply by placing this observer in this position and you can power the reset line over here and boom, it's perfectly hidden behind here. So you don't have to have it on the front. I just kind of did that for a showcase. So right here we have um, some repeaters in this piston. So as I mentioned earlier, moving a piston like this can actually give three game ticks of delay. So we can get an offset of one game tick. So each one of these repeaters has one redstone tick of delay, which actually equates to two game ticks of delay. So if we have three repeaters, we have 12 redstone ticks or 14, or sorry, 24 game ticks. And this piston will have three game ticks of delay. So we have 24 game ticks of delay over here and three from this piston and redstone block. So that should output 21 redstone ticks or 1.05 seconds. So here we go. Exactly right. So now I'm going to show you guys the setup with the with the horses. Uh, we actually do need repeaters here. So I'm just going to connect this up like so. And here we go. So I need these five redstone takes of delay because I got five repeaters coming down here. So I have a tripwire at the start and the end, and that's just going to start and stop our timer. So this command box is going to summon in the fastest horse in the game. So we can actually see how fast that is. So what you want to do when you do this is you want to align your character to make sure you're looking perfectly straight. So if you look down at your coordinates at the X, Y, Z, then you look one more column down, you see blocks, and then below that chunk, and then below that facing north. In that line, set at the very end of the line that says what direction you're facing, it says exactly the coordinates you were looking in. So mine right now say about 179. You want to make sure that's exactly straight. So in this direction, it's going to be 90 and 0 and then 90. In this direction, it's 180. So we're going to line that up exactly straight. It might be a little bit tricky. Here we go. There. Now we can run our distance. And it should come out to around seven seconds. There we go. Seven seconds exactly. And if you put that into a calculator, you'll you do 100 because this is 100 blocks long. Uh, I should have mentioned that earlier. Yeah, this is 100 blocks long. So the longer you make your track, the more accuracy you're going to be able to have. And 100 divided by seven is going to get you 14.28 or two nine blocks. Oops, it triggered it again on its own. <laughs> so 
so I'm just gonna nudge you off. Yeah, so the level of precision, I've gone in, um, and calculated how the air will propagate through. So for a horse that's uh, the slowest in the game, which is this guy right here, which I'll start running him across as we speak. Um, so this slowest horse is going to have an error of 0 0.01 blocks per second when you propagate all the air through. And the fastest horse is actually going to have a slightly bigger error of plus minus 0 0.1 blocks per second. So this guy's going to take quite a while. He's going to take like 20 some seconds to run across here. And the display, you see a little bit of lag when the numbers carry over from one digit to the next. But I tried my best to minimize the amount of time it took. Uh, so especially with the decoder down there, it can take a little bit. So there we go, we get 21.1 seconds. And if we plug that into a calculator, 100 divided by 21.1, you get 4.74 blocks per second. And now let's compare that to a player. So a player has a movement speed of around, um, well in the game it says 0.1, so that transfers to about 4.3 blocks per second. So a little bit slower than the slowest horse in the game. So you can actually change the amount of the movement speed here of the horse. So this is the fastest possible movement speed. And you can actually see the player's movement speed by doing slash data get and then entity. And then, yeah, you can do at P. Okay, so if you use this command data get entity at P attributes, it'll spit out the attributes of the player. So uh, let me clear my chat real quick because I've done it a few times. So here we go. So you can actually see the player's movement speed. Right here it says movement speed. And then to the left of it, it actually says the base first. So it's 0 0.1000. There's like seven zeros there. And then so those numbers are pretty insignificant at the end. So I found a slight discrepancy inside the game. So say, for instance, you set um, the a horse's movement speed to um, the same as a player's speed. You're actually going to get a slightly different speed. It's kind of odd. So if we do 0.1, which is the speed of the player. So let's quickly do a run as the player. So I'm going to reset this real quick. So if we, this is the player's walking speed is what that is. So sprinting is about 30% faster. So you can do the math for that as well. But here we go. So if we're walking as the player, align ourselves quickly. Oops. Oh, I had it. Okay. And as you can be checked. Alright, here we go. Got just says the line. And now we're just going to walk to the end. Now, the discrepancy I found is the horse's speeds seem to be consistent as you go through. But just the player speed is just slightly different. So, I'm demonstrating this here. This can take about 20 seconds to walk to the end. And then, I'll show you with the horse. So, here we go. You can see we got 23.15. Now remember that number because I'm going to show it with the same movement speed as the player has but with a horse. So, Alright, so the horse has the same movement speed as the player but we're going to actually get a slightly different time. Remember we got 23.15 seconds before. And so if you want to convert your movement speed to meters per second, it seems to be a number, you multiply the movement speed by approximately 43, but it seems to be slightly different for players versus horses. And I haven't tested um, many other entities such as like pegs or anything, but you can see we actually get 0.6 seconds more. So I've tested this a few times and um, I've shown it off here. I'm not completely sure what's going on. Maybe it's um, some slight desynchronization between the server and the client. I'm not completely sure. If you know anything more about this, uh, I would be interested. So please leave a comment. But if you want to download this world, I'll leave a link to download it in the description. And I'll leave a link to Il Mango's video and Koala Steamed his video too. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you loved it, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.